Hello all. In this video, I will show you how to configure cluster on Palo Alto Firewall. So focus would be on active passer. I'll create one more video to cover active active and some troubleshooting stuff. So let me first log into the firewalls. So we have two firewalls, PAN1 and PAN2 and then for testing we have two routers, R1 and R2. So let me first log into the firewall and configure management IP address. So username is admin and password admin. Go to configuration mode and set the management IP address. Set device config system IP address 192.168.1.199 and net mask would be 255.255.255.0 So by default the IP address on Palo Alto firewall is 192.168.1.1 So we have configured now management IP address as 1.199 Enter and we need to commit the changes from a candidate configuration to running configuration so meanwhile we can configure the management IP address on Palo Alto Firewall 2 as well so go to PAN2 username admin password admin configuration mode set device config system IP address 192.168.1.200 is the management IP address on Firewall 2 net mask will be slash 24 which is 255 255 255 dot 0 and then commit the configuration back to firewall 1 i could see if configuration has been successfully committed go to the browser and try to access the firewall so this is old window let me close this open again https 192.168.1.199 username admin password admin so very first task will be to configure interfaces their IP addresses zone configuration and if any routing is required in that case we will do the routing as well so that will be the very first configuration once that is done we will configure, we'll start with the configuration of high availability or active passive. So let's wait for a second to load this. Click on close, go to networks and we see nothing is configured as of now. So only management IP address is configured on the management interface. So one by one we will use in our topology for the LAN connectivity. One by two we will use to connect this interface with the WAN which is R2 for example and 1 by 3 and 1 by 4 will have interface type as HA so 1 by 3 will act as a HA1 interface and 1 by 4 will act as a HA2 interface so I will cover in brief what exactly is there in HA1 and HA2 interfaces so click on Ethernet 1 by 1 interface type L3 virtual router default security zone we have to create which is LAN in this case click on OK go to IP address add and the IP address on this interface will be 10.10.10.12 slash 24 ok similarly go to 1 by 2 interface type L3 virtual router default and security zone we need to create as WAN. Go to IP version 4, add 20.20.20.12 slash 24 and click on OK. So we have two interfaces configured. One will be connected to LAN and second will be connected to WAN segment. 1 by 3 and 1 by 4 will act as a cluster interfaces. So specify the interface type as HA. Okay. Similarly, 1 by 4 will act as a HA2 interface. So interface type, sorry, will be HA. Close. Let's commit this configuration and phase 2 we will start the cluster configuration. 
go to firewall 2 which is https 192.168.1.200 same stuff we need to configure one by one interface one by two interface and one by three and one by four will be selected as ha interfaces so username admin password admin okay Firewall 1, we could see configuration has been completed successfully. All the interface, we could see link state is up. On Firewall 2, go to networks. Select one by one interface. L3. Virtual router default. And then security zone is LAN. IP address has to be the same which was there on firewall 1 which is 10.10.10.12/24 so in the configuration of high availability i will explain why the ip addresses are same on both the firewalls <coughs> sorry go to 1 by 2 interface layer 3 as a type then default virtual router and then for example when is the zone IP address 20.20.20.12 slash 24 okay 1 by 3 has to be HA1 okay and 1 by 4 will be again interface type is HA and we will configure this interface as HA2 so we are done with the basic configuration let's commit the configuration changes to this firewall as well and meanwhile let's start making cluster configuration on firewall one so go to device then high availability and here we have to do the configuration related to the cluster so very first step enable the ha then group id so this group id has to be same on both the firewalls firewall 1 and firewall 2 and this number could be anything between 1 to 63 so group id in this case will be 1 for example group id has to be same on both the firewalls so i have selected the number as 1 mode is either active passive or active active so this video will focus on active passive so we will enable we will select this option then enable config synchronization so this configuration setting will help in replicating dynamic or runtime objects from firewall 1 to firewall 2 so this has to be enabled then it says peer ha1 ip address so ha1 interface is being used to sync the configuration plus hello messages and heartbeat messages will be exchanged over this HA1 link and this is layer 3 interface so we have to specify the IP address on HA1 interface so it says peer HA1 IP address so peer HA1 IP address will be 1.1.1.2 and my own IP address will be 1.1.1.1 so in this video there is no backup of HA1 interface so this option will leave as blank click on OK then second option active passive settings so by default passive link state interfaces are in shutdown or it can be in auto mode so both the firewalls will have same ip address so our broadcast for that ip address will reach to both firewalls so master firewall will always respond to the arp request and backup firewall will never respond to the arp request because of this configuration so that is the reason ip addresses are same on both firewalls so when we say shutdown in, in this case the moment failover will happen first interface will come up and then they will start responding to the traffic whereas in case of auto they are in type of basically soft shut mode so interfaces will be up but they will not respond to any ARP request or any traffic basically so it is always recommended so auto sometimes may save time 
because we need not to wait for interfaces to come up and then start processing traffic whereas in case of shutdown interfaces will first come up and then after that uh, they will start responding to the traffic but we can avoid network loops in case of shutdown so i'll prefer shutdown here and then click on ok election settings which firewall will become master and which firewall will become backup so number closer to zero will be given higher priority so for example this firewall configured as priority 50 and other firewall we will configure with priority as 100 so 50 will become master so in this lab preemption will be disabled and there is no heartbeat backup so click on ok now ha1 interface configuration click on settings so which interface will act as a ha1 interface so 1 by 3 for example will act as a ha interface ip address 1.1.1.1 and the subnet mask will be 255 255 255.0 if you want to enable encryption you can enable this option and gateway is not required because both firewalls are directly connected to each other with same segment ip address so click on ok go to ha ha1 we know we don't need for this lab because there is no backup interface for ha1 go to data link which is ha2 click on settings and we have to first select 1 by 4 interface which will act as a uh, which will act as a ha2 interface and ha2 interface basically is being used to replicate the dynamic or runtime objects so session table entries NAT table information, dynamic routing, DHCP lease information, IPsec assays, these are all dynamic objects, so that will be replicated over this interface. And if you see transport, by default transport is Ethernet, so IP address is not required in this case, so it will be a layer 2 communication. So click on OK and commit the changes. And last was HE2 backup, we don't have in this lab, so that is not required. Click on commit and cluster will be enabled in this case now cluster configuration has to be done on firewall 2 as well so go to device high availability enable this option group id has to be same which is one mode is active passive and now peer ip address in this case will be 1.1.1.1 so click on ok so we could see cluster is now enabled interface link state will be shut down okay go to election settings 100 because this firewall will act as a backup firewall click on okay ha1 interface ha1 interface is ethernet 1 by 3 and the ip address would be 1.1.1.2 because the peer has 1.1.1 so net mask 255 255 255.0 click on okay Backup is not required. HA2, we need to specify interface as 1 by 4 for the synchronization of dynamic objects. Click on OK and nothing else. Click on commit. So once commit has been done, we should be able to see firewall 1 as a master firewall, active firewall and firewall 2 as a backup firewall. Let's wait for a second and then we should be able to see cluster so go to firewall one close this dashboard go to widgets system high availability let's see so we see local firewall as an active firewall rest everything we could see is up everything is matching running configuration is already synchronized peer firewall is already is as of now in status as initial so we should be able to see in a few seconds, let me refresh that the peer firewall is now back up. So we could see cluster is now up and running, configuration is being synchronized, local firewall is active and remote firewall is passive. Go to firewall 2, same stuff, dashboard, widgets, system, high availability. Here we see local firewall is passive and the peer firewall is active and everything is being synchronized. So let me go to firewall 1, go to policies, let's create a test policy to allow traffic from R1 to R2 and that policy should be synchronized from firewall 1 to firewall 2 over HA1 link. So click on add, 
I'll not explain much about the options available we have in the security policy because there will be a separate video. In that video, I will cover each and every tab of a security policy in detail. So here, let's write test policy from R1 to R2. Source zone I want as LAN. Source address could be any. User is not required. Go to destination. WAN zone destination addresses any application any service application default what exactly is the this application default we will discuss in application identification and action is allow I want to enable logging for example uh, for testing I have enabled start and end which is recommended which has to be enabled that we will discuss in security policy videos so click on OK and commit this configuration now I should be able to see this configuration being replicated from firewall 1 to firewall 2 in real time so i should be able to see that on firewall 2 let's wait for a second let the policy to be committed successfully and then we can test meanwhile uh, we can configure routers we have r1 and r2 by default username and password is same vaita vaita same stuff go to configuration mode specify physical interface set interface ethernet eth0 address 10.10.10.1/24 one default route set protocol static route 0.0.0/0 next hope is firewall ip address 10.10.10.12 and commit is required on this router too. Go to R2, login with default credentials, specify IP address on physical interface which is Ethernet 0 address and this is connected to the firewall interface 202020X. So IP address here will be 202021 slash 24. Set protocol static reverse route 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 next hop 20.20.20.12 let me enable telnet service here and comment so from r1 to r2 we should be able to do a telnet go back to the browser close this uh, we have a policy here go to firewall 2 policies and we should be able to see same stuff here we could see policy so I could see configuration has been replicated go to firewall one dashboard and uh, uh, configuration as of now is not synchronized completely so it may take some time but we could see config uh, policy has been replicated so it may be synchronizing some other stuff so go to R1 and try to do a telnet so telnet 20.20.20.1 I can see telnet prompt, username, password, and we are effectively on a fire, uh, router 2, which is 202021. 20, so we could see traffic is being processed. Now, bring down firewall 1, and we should see this session should continue. I should be able to execute command on this session after the failover of firewall because the session table entries has been replicated. So go to firewall 1, device, this is type 1 how we can do the failover so there are different failover conditions which we will cover in troubleshooting under link and path monitoring right now I am focusing on manual failover so suspend local device okay so go to firewall to dashboard we should be able to see this firewall is now active peer firewall is in suspended state back to R1 and try to execute commands show interface so I could see after the failover traffic has been shifted to firewall 2 and i could see the commands are being executed and my session is still live let's do exit i'm back on r1 so that's all for this video try to replicate this lab on your laptop in second video i will cover how to configure active active some testing how test could be done then link monitoring and path monitoring i will cover in that specific video how the failover can be done using these configuration settings if you have any questions call me thank you very much that's all bye